Reporting from Arkham Asylum, this is Gotham Rogues. In this video we take a look at one-shot Batman villain, the Gold Coin Killer. Throughout his near 80 year old existence, Batman has faced countless enemies. Some of these have gone on to stand among the most infamous fictional villains in pop culture history, while others appeared merely once, never to show up ever again. In this segment of One Shot Bat Rogues, we spotlight the Gold Coin Killer. The Gold Coin Killer appeared in a story called Dark Messenger of Mercy, published in Batman 307 in 1978. It was written by Len Wein and penciled by John Callan. In it, there is a new mysterious serial killer in Gotham who targets homeless people, each time placing golden coins on the corpse's eyes. This murderer claims that he's committing these dastardly deeds out of mercy, as he believes his victims are neglected lost souls who are better off dead. Meanwhile, a Mr. Quentin Conroy reports the coins stolen from his personal collection. Naturally, the Batman is on this bizarre case, and he eventually discovers that Conroy is the gold coin killer. He turns out that his father, known as Limehouse Jack, ran out on his family years ago and became a derelict in the streets of Gotham. For a while he lived in the sewers, together with the very homeless people his son is now killing, until he disappeared and presumably died. Now he's back though, sort of, in the shape of Quinton. In some bizarre fashion, Limehouse Jack would possess his son, giving him his disfigured appearance and mad personality, and in disguise the deceased lunatic relieved his old friends of their earthly hardships. After this comic, the character never returned ever again, not even in cameos, and he's also never appeared in any other media. I think he's a pretty good villain actually, as his motivation is really interesting. It's kinda reminiscent of Victor Sass, who also believes that he's helping people when killing them. Still, Sass always comes off as really evil and sadistic, yet this guy doesn't really. Limehouse Jack really seems to think he's doing good deeds, and he's even genuinely surprised when he learns his old friends don't want his mercy. I mean, he's completely insane and deluded of course, but still somehow kind of sympathetic. He's one of those characters who so deranged that he doesn't even understand that he's deranged. I like the mystery of his condition too. We never find out just how Quentin took on the shape and persona of his deceased father, and no answer is even suggested. It could be supernatural, and that he was possessed by his dad's ghost, or it could be some kind of metahuman power that Quentin somehow subconsciously adopted his father's identity. The latter would be in line with Cornelius Sturck, who also had a shape-altering metahuman power that was never quite explained. I actually prefer this over the ghost alternative. And it it does kind of come off as that's what the story is going for. Again though, no real answer is ever given. Some people don't like that, but it's right up my alley, as I appreciate these kinds of Twilight Zone styled, open-ended bizarre mysteries. The gold coin killer works just fine in this one tale, and it isn't really necessary to bring him back. Seeing him in a cameo as an inmate of Arkham though, might have been fun. I recommend this comic, it's a pretty grisly tale with a strange yet somewhat compelling villain, although there is one goofy aspect to it, and it's that all of the homeless people either talk like leprechauns or like characters straight out of Oliver Twist. As a side note, the story also features the first appearance of Lucius Fox, so it does actually hold historical importance, even though his role is very small. So there you have it, that's the story of one shot Bat Rogue, the gold coin killer. Thank you for pledging, and as always, remember, Arkham Asylum awaits you in the next video.